Hi, I'm Ruth. Welcome to Spectrum. So glad to be able to share with you today. Ruth, we've got a couple of neat guests who are going to be with us. We're going to start off today with Charlie Moore, who's the Public Information Officer for the New Mexico uh, Taxation and Revenue Department. And we're going to continue the interview with Annie Johnson, who's a retail manager of Rio Grande Trading. She also has a special guest with her. Shane Smith will be joining her today, and he's an influencer here. He is. So we've got some great things coming up on the program. Stay with us. You're going to enjoy it. Well, we are pleased to have with us today Charlie Moore, who is the Public Information Officer for New Mexico Taxation and Revenue Department. It's been a while, Charlie, but welcome back to Spectrum today. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Well, we're looking forward to kind of catching up a little bit. You know, we're moving into to tax season and we want to talk about that, but I'm always interested to, to ask the question, how in the, in the world did you get involved in the you know, with the New Mexico Department of Taxation and Revenue? How did that come together for you? Well, I've been there now, gosh, almost five years. Okay. Uh, after a long career in newspapers, and this job came up, and it was something that uh, interested me, and there I landed. Well, there you go. So, so now you're working in kind of a, a new field, but it's one that you've got some experience with now for sure. Well, tell us a little bit about the tax season. You know, it's it's a punish. January is. Uh, coming to a close, February's start, about to start off. Give us the details. When does tax season officially open in New Mexico? Well, today. Both the IRS and New Mexico started accepting returns today. So, yeah, we're, we're in it. Monday the 29th. Correct. Wow. So, you know, ready or not, here we come. It, it's uh, that season of the year. I don't guess anybody necessarily probably looks forward to tax season. You talk to the CPAs, they're always like running around. And uh, those of us who are responsible for filing our taxes, we're trying to get all of our paperwork together. Is there anything new this year that's going to be, you know, uh, something to really be watching for as you're thinking about taxes? Yes, the big news this year is the new state child tax credit, which New Mexico families will be able to claim for the first time. Uh, we expect about 900,000 families or more are going to benefit from that. 900,000 family units. That's, wow. right. that's a significant number. Uh, when, you, when you think about that, the, a tax credit, I mean, kinda, I, I don't guess I really understand all the details. Give us, what does that mean? If, if you have a child and it's a qualifying child, you, you get money off your taxes? Is that basically what it boils down to? That's basically it. Generally, if you can claim a child as a dependent, you'll be able to claim the credit, but people should definitely check the instructions to make sure. So, yeah. Is, it, is the New Mexico standard tie-in with the federal standard, or does New Mexico have its own set of rules for how those qualify? Do it you... is tied to the federal, uh, to some of the federal standards, and, and the term that they use is a qualifying child under federal rules. Those are the rules that will apply for this credit. That's interesting. So, as you, as you think a little bit about that, how much is the credit worth... Uh, High end, what's the most that a child tax credit could be worth for somebody watching today? The credit can be worth up to $600 per child for families at lower income levels. Okay. It gets smaller at higher income levels. Okay, so depending on your income level, that child tax credit could be worth a different amount, but 600 could be the, be the high end on that. Do they stack? So let's say you had Three kids. Could it be worth as much as eighteen hundred dollars? Yeah, it's it's per child. All so right. that's right. So it's not just per household for one time. It's it's per however many children you have. I'm assuming that New Mexico's concept behind this is to provide relief and extra resources to families with children so that those children are better taken care of. Do you think that's probably the, the, the backstory? Yeah, absolutely. One thing, these these credits have proven to be um, 
real, a, a really good way to help reduce childhood poverty. When the federal credit was expanded a few years ago, child poverty just went way down. And then as soon as that expanded credit expired, the, we saw poverty levels increase again. So it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a good way to, to, to take aim at childhood poverty. So it's, it's a way to get hand, the money back in the hands of, of moms and dads. That's right. So that they can, uh, you know, use that money for, for their children. That makes perfect sense. Anything we should know about that credit that's, you know, hey, that's a little bit of a, a unexpected thing or a loophole, or is it pretty straightforward? It's pretty straightforward, but one really nice feature about the credit is that it is refundable. And what that means is that you'll receive the full value of whatever you qualify for, even if that's more than what you owe in taxes. Hmm. So if it's more than you owe in taxes, you'll still get the full amount back. So somebody, That's right. I mean, I'm going to make sure I get this. Hey, somebody owes 533 bucks, but they have a tax credit of 600. They're going to get the whole 600 back. Well, yeah. I mean, the first five, if they owed three five hundred thirty dollars in taxes, that first part of the credit will go toward that. There would be, in this case, seventy dollars oh, left okay. over. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they'll get the seventy dollars. I got you. I was missing. I was thinking, wow. Well, that's that's something that they're going to give. Okay, but I, I understand that 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 makes better sense to me. Well, what else is new? Is there any other new things to watch for as we get ready for a new filing deadline? You know, it's not brand new, but this is just the second year that retirees will not have to pay state income tax on their Social Security benefits as long as they're below a certain income level. And a portion of military pensions also is exempt from state tax. So people really should be sure to read the instructions to see if they qualify and to make sure they understand how to claim those exemptions. Do you have any general uh, thought toward the guideline of you know, where the thresholds mark, or do you just have to, those have to be looked up individually? I believe it was $100,000 um, for a single filer and $150,000 for a, uh, a married couple filing jointly. Now that's interesting, and you mentioned that that's a, new, a newer thing because I was talking to someone who deals with uh, providing retirees benefits, uh, and they were saying, they said to me, New Mexico is one of the only states that, that taxed, I think, Social Security. So you're saying that's kind of changed. It did. It, it just changed two years ago. So that used to be true, um, but it no longer is. I would think that would maybe invite more retirees to New Mexico, you know, honestly, because people don't want, you know, if, if you're on, on a fixed income, the last thing you want to do is give part of that away in taxes if you can keep from it. So that's probably was a was a wise move by the state of New Mexico, I would think. I think uh, we'll see. But yes, I think it, it certainly makes us more attractive. Yeah, it, it probably would. Well, is there anything else that you, you, we should know about? What what date does people do people have to have their state taxes filed by? You said it's opening up into January. What's the, the last date before you run into a into a problem or have to get an extension? Generally, it's the same as with the federal government. And this year, it's April 15th uh, is, is when most okay. are due. If you file and pay electronically, you can get a little extra time. But generally speaking, April 15th is the day you want to aim for. Okay. And uh, do you encourage people to, you know, to look for information? Do you, does the state have you know, available materials to help with tax preparation? Or if you're not sure, should you go find a professional tax preparer or maybe both? What do you what do you think? Uh, every everybody's going to be different. It depends on how complicated your you know your tax situation is. But uh, we do have lots of information available on our main website, which is tax.newmexico, spelled out, dot G-O-V, like government. Okay. So you can find the returns there, for example, um, and the instructions in case you need them for some reason. Um, but yeah, there's there's always plenty of information available. Okay, so a good place to go is at the website that was just uh, mentioned to you to, to look for those documents or for instructions to help you there. Of course, if you, you feel like you need extra help, it's probably that'd be the time to to solicit a tax preparer to, to kind of come alongside. As uh, we think about this, is there anything that, that, you know, the person watching the show today should say, hey, you know what, is, is there any loopholes or little bumps in the road that they should really be cognizant of? Or do you think this year is going to be a pretty straightforward presentation of how to get things done? You know, again, it just really depends on the taxpayer. It's really important to get organized. You know, get What does all... that mean, get organized? I mean, what do you th need to have? A lot of documents, right? 
So you know, you're going to have your wage statements, your 1099s. There's all sorts of documents that you have to gather up. Interest statements? Pardon me? Your interest, your interest statements. statements. Okay. Yeah, and you'll get those. You'll get those from your banks. You get them from your employer. If you have a pension, you're going to be getting them from whoever administers your pension. Uh, so all that has to be pulled together. Um, you know, you want to have your medical uh, records together because, for example, if you're a senior and you had a lot of medical bills, mm -hmm. on your state taxes anyway, that's something that you may be able to, to write off at least to some degree. So those are, those are really important as well. So, you, you know, you need to get your homework together. You, yes. You're going to have to go, and, and you, nobody really likes homework. Never did when I was uh, in school and college, and those things are never something that any of us look forward to, but it's really necessary to be best prepared so that you don't miss something that could, maybe sometimes it'll save you money, you know, if you've had some things that... Could. Absolutely. Yeah, you can, it's really important to read through the instructions to see what may be there that you'll qualify for. You never know. That's excellent. Well, it's time to, to be thinking about taxes. We're appreciative of having today Charlie Moore, who is the Public Information Officer for New Mexico Taxation and Revenue, giving us some helpful hints. Thank you so much, Charlie, for stopping Thanks by. for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. Thank each and every one of you who are participating with us here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting financially and prayerfully. Those two keys are so important. I know that many of you do pray for us and we are grateful for your prayers. And we are so glad, Ruth, to be able to be partnering with about 65 different ministries that we are able to share with our local community. And I hope that you pray for those ministries and pray for the station in general. Also, as you are supporting the station financially, it's really making a difference. We've been introducing some new family entertainment programming. We're excited about that. We're beginning to expand into streaming venues with Roku and uh, got some good things to share on that side as well. But when you give, as we're ending a month, starting a month in, in January, February, it's so important that your giving is faithful. Thank you for what you're doing. We'd invite you to visit our website Check out our schedule of programmers that we have on there, but you can also become a partner on our website at kazq32.org. It's safe and it is simple to do. If you'd like to call into the station to speak to someone, you can do that at 505-884-8355, extension 121, to speak with someone. If you have that donation in hand, you can send it to the offices at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. And we appreciate your prayerful support as well. And if you have a prayer request, please include that in your donation. Or if you'd like, when you're speaking to someone, we're happy to pray for you as well. You know, we've been hearing from a lot of you as our viewers, and uh, it's exciting to hear from folks all over mm -hmm. the, the region. You know, uh, Alpha Omega Broadcasting expands all the way up into Southwest Colorado, Northeast Arizona, and over most of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, I would invite you to pray with us as God is giving us some opportunities potentially to expand even a little bit more. And so we're looking forward to all that God has in store. Do your best financially. We are dependent on the faithful support of friends just like you. You are a blessing. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We are privileged today to have with us both Annie Johnson and also Shane Smith, both from Rio Grande Trading. And you might have guessed that by the large bolo that I'm wearing. Hey, welcome. Glad to have both of you with us today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having us. Well, we're looking forward to uh, kind of catching up. And Annie, I want to start with you. It's been a while since we've had you with us as you brought some wonderful friends over the years. Tell us what is new at Rio Grande Trading. Well, we are um, happy to announce that we got new signs in front of our building. Um, they look great. We're looking forward to uh, the Route 66 100th anniversary. We are right on wow. Route 66. And um, we're hoping that in the year 2026, we get a lot of visitors through. Isn't that something? Yeah. Two years away from the 100th anniversary. That's right. That's amazing. And it's a great route to follow. So if anybody's planning a trip, we highly recommend it. And then the best news of the year is we have a new team member, which is Shane Smith here. 
Um, he is a great addition to the team at Rio Grande, and I'm going to turn it over to All him. All right, well, let's talk to Shane and find out about the, the wonderful things that you're involved with. First of all, Shane, yep. how long have you been at Rio Grande uh, Trading? So, uh, I just pretty much hit the third week mark. So oh, you're brand yeah, new. Yeah, exactly. Fresh, <laughs> uh, brand new. But it's it's something that um, the jewelry business is something that I've always been around, as well as Native American textiles, pottery, uh, when I used to work over at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. And, of course, you know, just a little brief introduction of myself. My name is Shane Woletto smith Kithlachini and Shen, Nakai Dene, Bashishin, Kiaani Deshiche, the Bethlehem Deshinella. And basically, what that means is when I'm introducing myself to you, I'm telling you who I am in this world as a Navajo, who my mother is, my father is, my grandfather, and my grandmother. We do this so that way we can uh, find out who we are related to, if we're family, um, and of course, just to, you know, just that position in life. So that's what that's I do. And uh, it's been an amazing time here at Rio Grande, just in the uh, last three weeks since I've been here. Now, I, I have to ask, have you always been known for wearing the, the large uh, turquoise jewelry? Uh, turquoise jewelry. I mean, you've got some yes. massive pieces with you. Like, kind of show us what you're wearing. Oh, that's, yes. That's interesting. Yes. So isn't this beautiful, you guys? I believe this is Kingman Turquoise Cluster. Wow. And, of course, the bracelet's number eight turquoise. This is number eight as well. And uh, Kingman Turquoise right there. And when I say number eight uh, turquoise, um, norm normally all the turquoise that you see is named after the mines they come from. Okay. So Kingman from Kingman, Arizona, number eight. I forgot where that comes from, but then again, you know, that's what I do. I don't discriminate against any kind of turquoise. So, there you go. Yep. It, you're all inclusive. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. And then just like you said, um, I am known for wearing big jewelry. Uh, in the last two years um, since I've been at the, uh, going to the Indian market in Santa Fe, uh -huh. I have worn pieces made by my family and of course I have made um, the online version of Vogue twice and that was amazing. Is that right? Yes. yes. Well, I, want yep. to, I want to ask you about this piece that you brought that you let me wear today. I mean this thing yep. is, is is really it's, big. Yes. Tell me about it. So this one, of course, Navajo made, and it has one of the biggest pieces of turquoise. I tried to sell this one to somebody in the store the other week, uh, seeing if they would want to either pay outright or if they want to do layaway plan. But this piece right here, this is definitely, you know, a men's type statement piece. <laughs> this is a big piece. But not to say a women can't uh, wear it because I've seen women uh, wear bigger pieces as well. So, um, but once we saw this, we knew we had to put it on somebody. Okay. So, and it All also right. matches your ring as well. Yeah. So this was my day, you know, they yep. came in and had some neat stuff. And as many of you watch the program know, I, I'm not known for wearing uh, this giant bolo every day, but that today <laughs> is the day. And I, I got to do that. Hey, what made you want to join the team at Rio Grande? Uh, so I was working over at a, a Navajo Nation radio station and doing um, kind of just being a sales representative there, bringing uh -huh. in people to advertise through us. But that's not my passion. When I was working at the Indian Public Cultural Center, I was pretty much, um, you know, getting them, our artistry out there, whether it was Pueblo, Navajo, um, vase, um, uh, textiles, rugs, jewelry. I was there to support the native community in doing so and buying from them. So when I made that opportunity to try to come back to Albuquerque, the first place I called was, of course, the Cultural Center, and then after that, Rio Grande. After Annie picked our, I sent her an email because I was like, I'm too shy to, to call and um, you know try to get denied over the phone. But she answered me through email and I gave her a call and I was like, do you have something available? So when she told me, yes, we have this available, I was like, okay, I'm going to start moving back home and make that, or moving back to Albuquerque and make that transition. Now, Annie, over the course of the last few months, I've had the privilege of catching up with you. We, in fact, we've even stopped by and, and seen some of the neat things that you have over at Rio Grande Trading. One of the things that you were telling me is that you guys are continuing to work on kind of a, a, a more expanded uh, presence on the on the internet and, and letting people more people know about you, whether it would be through social media. Uh, I'm assuming that Shane kind of ties into that a little bit. Absolutely, he does. Shane is what we call a TikTok influencer. Wow! And he does. I've never he, sat he this does, close to a TikTok influencer. <laughs> he does several posts a day, and just in the last few weeks, we're seeing increased traffic. 
So tell us about that. So you're kind of like a New Mexico TikTok celebrity. Is that true? That's that's what they tell me. But, right, you know, right. um, definitely. We'll, we'll believe whoever they are. Right, right? <laughs> exactly. So, but it's always fun to, um, be, you know, since uh, my journey on TikTok, it was mainly just to have fun, make people laugh and smile, you know, forget about their problems. And that was one of the things was I kept it going and people started noticing the jewelry that I was wearing. And, you know, they were like, oh, where did you get that? And I was, you know, I was like, oh, I got this over at, you know, my family's and stuff. So soon it progressed from there. But um, just like I was telling you earlier, I I don't like hearing the sound of my own voice, but um, I do voiceovers, lip syncing, and I try to get it perfect because I see other, you know, influencers doing that. And I'm like, no, you just have to, you know, listen to it a couple of times, you know, say it over the camera. But then again, I'm one that grew up with the, you know, radio and TV and memorizing these lines and stuff. Right. Because I always, you know, felt at some point I wanted to be an actor of some sort. So, so. you now you are, and it's a social media actor. So exactly. Now, yes. do you work that into uh, bringing people into the store? Yes. Um, you, so far, just in, do that? Um, just in the last couple of days, um, you know, I worked in a Lord of the Rings um, with these guys' merchandise, and I'm glad that they allowed me to do it because they're like, go ahead, Shane. So I went ahead and did that and um, uh, film got several rings that fit each category. And then, of course, I did an introduction to the store, showing people, you know, a grand tour of, you know, what the store can look like. But, you know, uh, and then, of course, just recently we started, um, I started putting on there some of the 75% off stuff that we had. And that one, I've been getting messages like crazy people like, I want this. I want two of them. So um, <laughs> after great. I left the store, they were, you know, they're trying to call the store. And I was like, oh, we're closed on the weekends, though. So, but. So you've, you've seen some, I mean, if you've only been doing this for less than a month, you've really started to see some traction. Yes. Isn't it amazing, you know, uh, for both of you, how how influential, you know, both social media and internet presence really is. I mean, that yep. really does a lot of amazing things. Mm -hmm. Well, give us a reason. Why should people come to, to Rio Grande Trading in January or even into February? So basically, one reason is because of the beautiful items that you can find there, whether it's jewelry, pottery, rugs, anything, you can know. I, can I yep. just stop and mm -hmm. say... Uh, Ruth and I uh, have, have been dropped in several times, and we didn't do it right away. I mean, we, it took us a little while. We, we went down there, and, and once we went, we were just kind of hooked. Mm -hmm. I mean, Annie could tell you, we show up every every few weeks and pop back in, and, and I've even dropped by that 75% off case and yep. checked it out and said, look at that stuff. But go ahead. Keep yep. telling us about yeah, it. Yeah, so but basically, those are some of the reasons, just the beautiful artistry. And then, of course, if you're looking for souvenirs, gifts from New Mexico, mm -hmm. and, you know, I will always you know that's one thing New Mexico is where my home is so it's where you know route 66 was formed and of course a lot of the movies were shot over the years so New Mexico has always um, you know uh, been a role in what I do so and that's what Rio Grande brings to it as well do you have items in your store uh, that are New Mexico true that connect to things made in New Mexico um, that's a question for Annie. <laughs> well, pretty much all the native art is made mm. in New Mexico. There you go. Okay. Yes. So, I, you know, I don't know what the yes. definition to be in New Mexico true is, but I knew there was a lot of stuff there that was New Mexico stuff. Yes. yes. And made by local artists, Art, correct? Local artists. And that's a lot of people always, um, in the last couple of days, people were asking me that. They're like, do they buy from artists? I'm like, yes. You know, I see them coming in. And that's the great part is they see me from TikTok. All right. So, well, tell us the address for folks who might be watching today. Annie, how can folks actually find you? We are at 1920 Central Avenue Southwest, right at Central and San Pascual. All right. Easy place to find. It's a, it's a building that you won't miss out on. I really appreciate both having both Shane Smith and also having Annie Johnson with us today. They've been telling us some fun stuff happening right in our community. Thank you for being with us. Of course. Thank you. sharing today about wisdom and some of the things that happened in Solomon's life. You know, do you ever pray? I know you do. You pray for wisdom. I, do. I pray for divine wisdom and understanding that only the Lord can give us. And we're going to be talking about today or sharing in 1 Kings 3.10. 
Okay. So. You want to read that one? Sure. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. You know, the other day, I decided to do a study on wisdom. And I found a lot of different things that the Word of God tells us. But one of the things that I found, and we've been talking about, mm -hmm. is exactly that verse. God likes it for you to ask Him for wisdom. That's good. You thought about that? I mean, that's exactly what it says. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. He, he wanted him to say, God, I need to understand your ways better than anything else. So would you help me? Now, that's really encouraging for us because most of us lack wisdom in an area, at least in one area. Our yeah. finances, our relationships, our health, mm -hmm. you name it, we need wisdom. God wants you to ask. That's good. Here's the second thing, mm -hmm. though. Next chapter, still talking about Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29 says this. God gave Solomon very great wisdom and understanding and knowledge as vast as the sands on the seashore. Wow. And you know what that one verse spoke to me about is that the kind of wisdom that God can give you is expansive. It is not limited to just one area of your life. It can expand and spill into a lot of places if you'll just let God speak to you about those things. And that, that requires faith for us to do that, for us to receive what God has for us and say, Lord, I know that your word is true. I know that if I ask you for wisdom, you'll give it to me. And we have to then, as the Lord gives us his wisdom, as the Lord gives us understanding, be sure to say that this is from the Lord. This isn't me, right? That's a great This truth. is given from the Lord. This is not me, just like Daniel did. I don't know how to do it, but I, there is a God in heaven who has given me understanding. So we need to always point back to our Savior. That, that is great. You know, I, I, I just encourage you to ask the Lord to help you to know what to do in the areas of your life, number one, and then to realize that God is interested in so many areas. It's not just one area or one component of your life. Get into a study of God's Word. It will change your life. Thanks for being with us today.